First to that truck that everybody seems to be talking about. We are, of course, talking about Tesla's cyber truck, but Tesla's stock taking a dive after unveiling its first all electric pickup. Possibly include the, uh, <laughs> the <laughs> angular, futuristic <laughs> looking teapot. <laughs> what else do we have? This is great. We've got the dump oh, truck. Oh, yeah. now that's flattering. Previously, in 2019, Tesla unveiled the Model Y, but a missing Q1 deliveries made it appear that Tesla was running out of demand, which pushed the stock down to three-year lows. Throughout June, Tesla stock did recover, and on July 3rd, Tesla reported Q2 deliveries. Breaking news out of Tesla, charging higher after the company reported delivery numbers moments ago, record ones at that. Let's get to Phil LeBeau with the very latest on this. Phil. Elon Musk said they were close to setting a record for the second quarter, and they did in fact do that. Total deliveries coming in at 95,200. The Model 3 numbers, this was what everybody was focused on of all of these, 77,500. And there's also good news regarding the backlog. In the release, Tesla says orders generated during the quarter exceeded our deliveries. Thus, we are entering Q3 with an increase in our order backlog. Elon Musk has said for some time there is not a demand problem. Does this delivery number change the bear thesis? And I will go to perhaps the biggest bear here on this desk, and that would be Tim Seymour, who went short well, on Tesla. Yeah, I don't, I don't think this changes the bear thesis. Shortly after, Tesla reported Q2 2019 earnings. Tesla, take a look at that, down 11%. Melissa, it's not just that the 2Q loss was greater than expected. Tesla losing $1.12 per share. The revenue coming in at $6.35 billion, a little shy of expectations. They lost $400 million in a quarter where they had record deliveries. What do you think is going to happen in the third quarter? This, to me, sets up an even worse third quarter. Remember the first quarter. So, I mean, the trend here, to me, is awful. Uh, and, and, and again, the gross margin t at least begins to tell, I think, people that didn't think this. This is a structurally unprofitable car. And I'm talking about the Model 3. And during the conference call, we got some major news on Tesla co-founder J.B. Straubel. J.B. Straubel, co-founder and chief technology officer, will be transitioning to a senior advisor from the CTO role. And uh, Drew Beckmino will be taking over at most of J.B.'s responsibilities. I'd like to thank J.B. for his fundamental role in, in, in creating and, and uh and building Tesla. Thank you, JB. <clears throat> Thanks, Elon. Um, the, if, if we hadn't had lunch in 2003, Tesla wouldn't, wouldn't exist. It's been, uh, it's, yeah, it's been a, quite an adventure of 16 years. Lunch with you and Hal, Hal Rosen at Smith and Wallet, at what, uh, McCormick and Schmicks in Alsgindo. That's the reason Tesla exists. I, I remember it well. Where else? <laughs> and uh, maybe just to, to, to add a bit more to that, um, you know, I, I'm, I'm not disappearing, and you know, I, I just want to make sure that people understand that this is not, um, not some, you know, lack of confidence in the company or the team or anything like that. Uh, it's, I, I love the team, and I love the company, and I, I always will. And, and I'm excited to stay involved in, in some of our core technologies, and, and uh, you know, follow that and help where I can. Uh, just in less of a, less of an operational, obviously less, not an executive uh, type role. Sounds good. Elon also explained why some service centers had major delays in receiving spare parts. We've just been very silly about where we store our parts, sending parts directly to service centers. The current system is quite boneheaded, actually, speaking <laughs> self-referentially. Like, we've been just like super dumb in, in some of the things we've done where on one of the trips to China last year, I, as I would always ask, okay, what are we doing wrong? What, what can we fix? And the, our, our China team is great, by the way. Is, they're like, well, you know, do you think we could have spare parts that are made in China just sent directly to our China uh, service centers? Because currently there's a bunch of parts that are made in China, then sent to a warehouse in New Jersey, and then sent back to China. It's literally was ha what was happening. Super nuts stuff. It's going to get way better. In other news, a Tesla police vehicle ran out of charge during a pursuit and made national headlines. 
Now that story about the Tesla police car. Yes, indeed, it ran out of power while pursuing in a chase of another car. <laughs> uh, they had to call off the chase? Or they what? had to call off the chase. Um, OK, this was in Fremont in the Bay Area. Police officer picked up his Tesla to start his shift uh, early afternoon. And we need to point out it was not fully charged. This chase of a suspect's vehicle began at 11 o'clock at night. Oh. So the battery was definitely uh, run down. He had to call in on dispatch to say, I've only got six miles of battery life left. I have to pull out of this chase. There were other cars, combustion cars, that were in the race. However, the, the actual suspect car did get away. They found it abandoned. But bottom line is, despite that, the uh, Fremont Police Department, who's piloting this, uh, giving it a go, says they love the car. It's meeting or exceeding their expectations. In other words, should, should have had the car fully charged when he began his shift. But hey, there you go. Okay. <laughs> the suspect got away. <laughs> but on a more serious note, Elon and the SEC finally settled. Tesla shares are higher this morning. A judge has approved Elon Musk's settlement with the SEC over fraud allegations for when he said he had secured the funding needed to take Tesla private. About a 4.5% move on Tesla. $20 million civil penalty, David, as you know, and then, of course, uh, relinquishing the chairman role, at least yeah. for a while. The, the three years uh, at the very least. The question, of course, is who's going to take that role. Tesla announcing it has now chosen Robin Denholm. Uh, and has created a role for her to be the board chair. Denholm is currently the CFO of Australian telecom operator Telstra. She's going to be leaving that role as part of this once her six-month notice period with the company is up. So while there was some reorganization on the Tesla board, in October, Tesla reported a new delivery record figure of 97,000 vehicles sold in Q3. For the Tesla short sellers, they weren't too concerned as they believed that Tesla would have awful margins, meaning the more cars they sell, the more money they lose. So Tesla reporting record deliveries should equal record losses, right? Wrong. Tesla, the company just reporting results. The stock is ripping higher despite reporting a revenue missed. Uh, Phil LeBeau has been digging in the numbers. He continues to, and we go straight to him. The reason this stock is shooting considerably higher is because the adjusted EPS is a buck eighty-six profit for the third quarter, and that is far above what most people were expecting. The expectation, the consensus out on the street was for a loss of 42 cents a share. Revenue did come in at $6.30 billion. The expectation was for $6.33 billion. And then when you look at their gross margins, 18.7% is what most of the analysts were uh, zeroing in on in terms of what the expectation was. Well, the auto gap gross margins came in at 22.3%. The numbers and guidance that Tesla provided were so strong that during this very interview, the stock went from $281 at the start of the segment to over $300 by the time it was done. Interestingly, whenever outspoken Tesla short seller Tim Seymour got FaceTime and tried to pour cold water on Tesla's earnings, the stock in real time would push higher and higher. Following earnings, Tesla wanted to keep the positive momentum going with the upcoming reveal of the Tesla Cybertruck. We spent a lot of time on design of the pickup truck. Like, I think it's the coolest car I've ever seen, to be frank. I think it's, not everyone may share that opinion, but uh, worst case scenario, uh, we'll build a normal looking truck, yeah, no problem. <laughs> we know what those look like. So um, the, this, this is something that'll, if you're driving it down a road, it's look like it came out of a sci-fi movie. So it'll be really cool, I think. In the months leading up to the official reveal, rumors circulated as to what the new pickup truck would look like. Tesla even released a teaser image, but still, no one had any clue as what was to come. Terminator! Welcome to the Cybertruck unveil. Yeah! Trucks have been the same for a very long time. <laughs> so, sorry to, this is a trial, this is a trial, please. We took the brands off, but uh, it's hard to tell which is which, is which with the brands off. They'll, they'll pretty much look the same. We need something different. And we, and we, need, we need sustainable energy now. Yeah. 
if we if we don't if we don't have a pickup truck, we can't solve it. But, uh, the number one selling truck a vehicle in America, top three uh, selling vehicles in America are pickup trucks. We have to have, if to solve sustainable energy, we have to have a pickup truck. So I present to you the cyber truck. So we're able to make the, the skin out of uh, thick, just ultra hard stainless steel. It's really hard. <laughs> we're gonna show you just how hard. So, <laughs> Franz, Franz has a sledgehammer. Now I have the cyber truck. Wind, I really wind up and nail it. <laughs> so if you think about a, like a truck, you want to, you want a truck that's tough. You want a truck that's really tough, not fake tough. <laughs> you want a truck that can take a sledgehammer too. A truck that won't scratch, doesn't dent. What else can we do with this truck? Uh, Franz, could you try to break this glass, please? Yeah. Sure? Yeah. Oh my f***ing God. Well, maybe that was a little too hard. Yeah. <laughs> Should we try it in the mirror? Sorry? It didn't go through, Let's so that's a, that's a plus side. Let's try the right. Okay. Try that one, really? Okay. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> oh, man. It didn't go through. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> eh, not bad. Uh, room for improvement. <laughs> we, we, we actually throw everything. We threw wrenches. Uh, we threw everything. We even literally threw the kitchen sink at the at the, the, the glass, and it didn't break. For some weird reason, it broke now. I don't know why. <laughs> you know, just fix it in post. But what about a real world, real world test? Like, let's, let's uh, actually have a tug of war here with an F-150. I mean, yeah, but it was uphill. Now let's see, the, how does this uh, compare to uh, a Porsche 911? <laughs> okay, we're gonna give the Porsche a little bit of a head start. Yeah, this is a, this is a current, current edition Porsche. That this, and this is the actual truck, that, this is not CGI. <laughs> <laughs> Following the event, the Cybertruck was mocked, dismissed, while the stock was down. My Tesla breaks, the unbreakable shares are falling after a disastrous reveal of its latest vehicle. It's called the Cybertruck. It's interesting looking at the car itself because it's mm. ugly. It's you can say it. <laughs> it's pretty it's, ugly. It's ugly. It's not like your usual pickup. They were actually trolled by another company. Wow, Vodafone, Vodafone UK. Yeah, Vodafone UK. So they are. Launching, this is, this is clearly a joke, the cyber phone, they've got a cross by the shockproof glass, you can see they've mimicked the, uh, the, the Tesla the, the, shatter yeah. there, but there are various other comparisons out there, there's more than we can possibly include, the, uh, <laughs> the <laughs> angular, <laughs> futuristic looking teapot, <laughs> <Coffee> <laughs> what else do we have, this is great, we've so, got the dump oh, truck, oh, yeah. now that's flattering, 
But it also is designed to appeal to the kind of the die-hard Tesla supercar lover. Not to 60, apparently 2.9 seconds. Yeah, now you make a great point there. I do think this appeals to the hardcore yeah. Tesla yeah. fans. I'm not sure your ordinary contractor that's going about his business is going to potentially purchase this. The market does not see this as a mass market yeah. car. They're seeing this. This isn't really about the broken glass. This is about the missed opportunity when it comes to the pickup market in the US, which is about 18% uh, of all car sales in this country. The top three cars are all pickups. Yeah, yeah. I want to get excited about that down 6% or 6.4%, but it, whoa, boy, it's had one heck of a run up. Right. right. This okay. is it. Right here we have the last earnings right. report. Um, <laughs> let's just circle that so everyone can see it. That was where they posted a profit, which was a surprise. Since then, they've rallied about 30%. They're still up about 30%, uh, even with the fall today since that, up about 50% in the last three months today, about flat for the year. We like trucks that use a lot of gasoline, that smell like diesel, and are powerful. And I think this whole idea of e-truck runs against the ethos of what we're used to with pickups, which is just raw torque. Then, one day later, something interesting happened. Elon announced that there have been 146,000 reservations. Two days later. Well, these are impressive numbers. If you look at it in terms of number of people who have said, look, I'm interested in buying the Cybertruck. They have collected 200,000 reservations. When you compare the Model 3 reservations after a couple of days with the Cybertruck reservations, 267,000 of the Model 3 versus 200,000 for the Cybertruck. But a key difference here, guys, the Model 3 back in 2016, when they unveiled it, they said $1,000 was the deposit. That's what you had to put down there. And that's a big difference from $100. A few days later, reservations get to 250000 On December 18th, Tesla stock hits all-time highs, cracking over the $393 mark. And then on December the 24th, Tesla stock hits $420.69. Shortly after, there was more good news. Tesla delivered its first Model 3 electric cars built at its Shanghai factory. It comes less, a little less than a year since the uh, company began working on the $2 billion plant. This is the first wholly foreign-owned car plant uh, in China. Uh, and shares of Tesla have been exceeding all, well, everyone's really, expectations now, all the way up to $430. And to end the year... Tesla had one more surprise up their sleeve. Tesla is capping off a volatile year riding on an all-time high. The company shattering Wall Street expectations with record delivery numbers for 2019. The announcement pushed Tesla stock over $450 a share for a time today. In total, Tesla ended the year delivering 367,000 vehicles, another record that many thought wasn't possible considering Tesla had only delivered 63,000 vehicles during Q1. Tesla also ended the year generating 24.6 billion in revenue, 6.3 billion in cash on hand, and a gap loss of 870 million. However, Tesla did record a profit in both Q3 and Q4, setting themselves up nicely heading into 2020. In the next episode, Tesla stock starts breaking out in a major way to the upside, while a global pandemic brings major volatility. Finally, thank you to the Patreons that support the show, and remember, all content is for educational and entertainment purposes and not financial advice. So till next time, I'll catch you guys soon.